Welcome to Keep Smiling, the e-commerce customer experience podcast. Selling products online is challenging and can lead to poor customer experiences. Each episode, we explore how entrepreneurs and organizations in e-commerce are delivering delightfully unexpected experiences to their shoppers and customers. Amazon, Shopify, artificial intelligence, we'll discuss what matters today and what you can do to build a better e-commerce business. We'll show you how. Hello, listeners, and thank you for tuning in once again. I'm your host, Ty Walters, and joining me today is my co-host and business partner, Michael Melgar. Hey, everyone. Hope you're having an excellent day. Today's show is another e-commerce customer service roundup. This is where we cover a combination of some of the most interesting content, news, policy updates, social comments that we as a team at Seller Smile have found over the past several weeks. This episode will be covering interesting finds in the month of June. If you want to listen to our first e-commerce customer service roundup episode, go back to episode seven that was recorded at the end of May. These episodes are meant to be a medium, timely take on some of the recent events that are occurring that e-commerce merchants should be aware of. We'll also do a combination of an FAQ or Q&A of sorts. So if someone has a really interesting customer service related question, we might feature it on one of these episodes as well. Before we begin today's episode, a short disclaimer, Michael and I were discussing that there is so much going on in the world of e-commerce, customer service, Shopify, Amazon. A modern business owner needs to be aware and have their fingers of the pulse of many different outlets. And because of that, We highly recommend that if you hear something that you feel like pertains to your business in one of these episodes or in any of our episodes for that matter, please take the next step, do your own research because things change fast and Michael and I are providing a brief overview of a lot of these topics which could be important and deserve a much closer look. But the point is we can't do it all. The ultimate responsibility is in the hands of you as the business owner. So take this as maybe inspiration, as additional research, take it to the next level understand what these topics and updates really mean for your business and implement them accordingly. Oftentimes we'll do our own seller smile interpretation of what we think some of these updates mean. But as Ty mentioned, ultimately we'll come down to your unique business setup. And the first topic that we wanted to cover today is an update from Shopify directly. Earlier this month, Shopify held their Shopify Unite Partners Conference, and they made a lot of significant announcements, different changes to their business and platform. And some of those changes are more applicable to customer service and customer experience than others. We encourage you to go check that out. We'll include a link in the show notes of this episode to Shopify's article. The major highlight from that conference that we wanted to discuss today was their announcement that they will begin competing with Amazon for fulfillment. Shopify says they want to get in the game of storing and shipping out your products to your customers. There are a lot of fascinating facets and aspects to this update. We're going to cover a few of them today. If you have any questions on this update, please send your questions and comments to keep smiling at sellersmile.com. We'd love to answer that in a future episode. But for this update, I'll kick it off, Michael. We found an article by entrepreneur.com, and I'm going to read a quote from that. It says, one of the biggest pain points for merchants is shipping logistics. One of the most major announcements at the conference was that Shopify will be competing with Amazon in the launch of its distribution network. A common way to set up a Shopify store today in 2019 is to build the store and then integrate it with Amazon FBA. What happens here is when a sale is made on Shopify, a series of triggers occurs where Amazon takes over responsibility for fulfillment of that order through their MCF program. There's a tight combination, a tight relationship with Amazon and Shopify in this case. Michael, you and I are pretty familiar with some of the issues that may occur when it comes to this Amazon FBA Shopify integration. And I think we're seeing this as Shopify's attempt to put some effort and thought into this to make it a better experience for customers of Shopify stores, but also for the merchants that are running those stores. In just the last three months, we've seen so many updates with regards to shipping logistics. Amazon announcing one day shipment for Prime members, FedEx announcing that they no longer will provide express shipping for Amazon in the U.S. And now we see Shopify stepping into this game of fulfillment. And 
we see that having a really big impact with e-commerce sellers, particularly e-commerce sellers who have their own Shopify store. A lot of the sellers that we work with currently and that we know of use Amazon's multi-channel fulfillment as a backend integration for their Shopify store. So whenever someone purchases from them, it automatically creates an order on Amazon and Amazon's handling all that fulfillment. This update can change a lot of that setup. It could have a lot of impact on the cost for you to do business. It could have a lot of impact on your buyers and how quickly they get their orders. But Shopify is coming right out of the gate saying that they're going to offer two-day shipping for this distribution network. A quote directly from their announcement where they're introducing the Shopify fulfillment network, they say they want the fulfillment network to be a dedicated network of fulfillment centers that will ensure timely deliveries and lower shipping costs for a superb customer experience. That's amazing. I'd love to see this announcement. There's all this talk nowadays about who's going to compete with Amazon. How long are they going to last? Uh, who's second best? And where's Amazon uh, vulnerable? I didn't really see this one coming. Uh, we're not that connected in the industry or at least at those levels. But certainly this is interesting because one of the biggest draws of Amazon Prime, that Prime membership, is the speed of the shipping. We talked about everyone loved two-day shipping. Now it's one-day shipping. It's same-day shipping if you live in a, a greater metro area area or a, or a larger city within the U.S. So it seems like one of the stronger points that Amazon has in sort of defense of anyone that's going to compete with them. Of course, Amazon is large and wide. They're, they're an AWS. They have their retail. They have their own brands and, and, what, and, and they have many arms and aspects of their business. But when it comes to sh shipping and delivering products, that's one of the most tangible, high-resolution interfaces that they have with their customers. That product, that package is making it to your doorstep. It has the Amazon tape on it. Can Shopify do it better? I like that they're competing, and I'm looking forward to seeing updates and how that functions in the future. And I'm sure we're going to be interfacing with this Shopify fulfillment network on behalf of our clients. I'm open-minded and, and seeing what they do here with that. More competition is a really good thing. Uh, we don't necessarily foresee Shopify overtaking Amazon and its fulfillment network, but it's still going to provide a really big resource for sellers who are selling on Shopify because it'll be an alternative solution. Maybe Amazon fulfillment is a little too expensive for your needs. If Shopify can offer a better solution, not only will that have a huge impact on your business, it'll have a huge impact on the end user, on the shoppers. It's making customer experience better all across the internet by being able to offer that sort of experience. So moving on, when is it available? At this current time, Shopify says that you can apply for early access to start shipping orders directly from Shopify's fulfillment centers. To apply, you can log in, and we'll provide a link to this on the show notes, but you can log in directly from your Shopify admin store. If you're a Shopify store owner and you're listening right now, go sign up no matter what. Even if you think you won't be leveraging this system, it'll be good to get in there early because sometimes these things have a longer waiting list and at least you'll have early access to see what's available, what's provided to Shopify store owners, and sometimes acting on that information fast is the difference. So take a look. And as of this time, June 2019, there is no announced cost. You have the ability to log in and apply to become a part of that network, but no current pricing is announced. Just a final wrap up note on this update by Shopify. Michael, you and I are aware that there are several caveats and inconsistencies with the Shopify Amazon integration. There's several issues sometimes we have to create manual workarounds for. There are third party software solutions aimed at addressing some of these concerns. Anyone that's working heavily with Shopify and Amazon at the same time has come across some of these issues. A few of them that we've noticed are there's an inability for multiple Amazon tracking numbers to be uploaded to one Shopify order. Typically, our workflow with a Shopify store is that an order is placed and an automatic email is sent out to that customer at the point when there's a tracking number available for that shipment. To clarify... Shopify does allow you to add multiple tracking numbers, but there's not an automatic integration to feed that information directly from Amazon's tracking information. So Amazon will only send over one tracking number, even if there's multiple tracking numbers available for one order. 
Thank you for saying that because that's very important. This is still achievable with a manual type of workflow, but we want this automated and accurate as much as possible. And in the similar way that Amazon does it when you're purchasing from their platform versus Shopify. But in this case, there's a slight inconsistency with that information and it causes confusion. It's a source of customer service tickets because there's confusion occurring. They ordered maybe multiple units of something or the units were too large to be packed into one shipment. And in some cases, the customer receives their order, but maybe they get the first box a day before the second box. They are under the assumption they got an incomplete shipment because they're missing some of the products they ordered. Or maybe we've even seen some of the more proactive customers, they'll look online for that shipping information and and see something doesn't look right or they're expecting more than one box um, or more than one weight even sometimes on that box. The point is, it's a poor customer experience and there's not a good solution to it currently. Our team is able to go into Amazon's Seller Central interface and grab those tracking numbers for the customer and send them along. But ultimately, a better experience would be to get them right away and on time and have complete transparency about what's going on. And as of this time, again, June 2019, there's not any sort of automatic option to get that information from Amazon. There's not an app available in the Shopify App Store and there's not an integration available from Seller Central. Some other things that we've seen and talked about before are that it is difficult to cancel an Amazon MCF order. The difficulty lies in that sometimes the order status changes so fast where we lose the ability to cancel it. It's too far along. It's getting ready for shipment, getting packaged and prepped. Another aspect would be where, let's say in the case, your your customer bought a product from you. It's not really going to work for them, so they need to make a return. Where are they going to return that product to? Do you have an intake center where you can process returns? Would you advise that customer to return to Amazon when in their mind, they never went shopping on Amazon? They just bought from your native web store, your Shopify site. In most cases, this customer will see a package arrive on their doorstep with Amazon branding on it. That's confusing to a customer. It's not a consistent brand experience. So these are some of the nuances and some of the the issues and troubles that we've seen with the Amazon Shopify integration. I hope that with Shopify's announcement of their own fulfillment network, that some of these items will be addressed. Some of these things will be improved upon and there'll be a better experience both for the customer and for the store owner. And this to me tells us that Shopify likely will not prioritize creating more integrations to facilitate the Amazon fulfillment, they're likely going to be more focused on the Shopify fulfillment aspect of it. I'm sure we're going to be dealing with sort of legacy users of Shopify that want to continue using their Amazon stock. Internally at Seller Smile, we're going to have to learn how to use both systems. And I'm sure we're going to learn even more about the specific features and aspects of each one of those. But in reality, much remains to be seen as to where this will go. We definitely see it as a positive update for both merchants and shoppers. The final topic for our June 2019 customer service roundup is Amazon's announcement of updated title guidelines. If you're an Amazon seller tuned in to different social media groups or online forums, you've likely seen this announcement circulating. Michael and I would like to talk about that announcement because we believe it is related to proactive customer service, having titles of your products on Amazon not only obey Amazon's policies, but that are a great customer experience. Your product titles are proactive customer service because not only will it help you to abide by the policies of the platform you're selling on, so your listings are not suppressed by that platform, but Amazon acknowledges themselves in a quote about this release that a consistent shorter title is a better customer experience. So Michael, tell us more about this title guideline update. Certainly. So on June 17th, Seller Central's update posted, ASINs violating Amazon title guidelines to be suppressed from search. They say, starting July 22nd of 2019, Amazon will suppress ASINs from Amazon search whose titles do not comply with Amazon's product title requirements. This is because our research shows that the ASIN titles that violate our policies result in poor customer experience. Please review Amazon's FBA product title requirements prior to July 15th, 2019 to verify that your current titles meet our guidelines. So there's several things here that are really interesting. At Seller Smile, we are by no means listing experts. We're not in the business of of maximizing the types of keywords that are getting get your shoppers to your listing. However, we are heavily focused on how helpful your listing actually is. So when someone actually comes to your listing, they've come across it because those search terms 
got them to that place, making sure that your listing includes enough information to truly not only finish selling them on the product, but also answer any questions for them that they might have right up front. Those are the types of things that we tend to focus on at Seller Smile. And we see the title of your listing as part of that. Right. The title can be misleading. The title can be inaccurate, which is even a worst case scenario, or the title can be really well written with the types of keywords that are signals to your prospective customer, to that shopper that your product is the right one for them. And on top of that, from a shopper perspective, and that's, I tend to side more with a shopper perspective. When I come to these titles that are just absolutely just stuffed with keywords, it, I almost find it difficult to understand exactly what the product even is. I want to know without having to do all this extra research, what it is that you're trying to sell to me. Whenever I see the title just stuffed with keywords, it's very obvious to your buyer when it's just something that's meant to manipulate search. So keep that in mind. You know, your shoppers are, they're not robots. They're people who are actively trying to find stuff that they need to buy. And by using your title in a way that connects with them and gets them to where they can find more information in the product description, that's a better experience than keyword stuffing and trying to maximize the amount of search terms in your product title. So there's a few things about the announcement that we wanted to point out. Number one, the deadline, they mentioned two separate dates. They mentioned that starting July 22nd, they will suppress those ASINs, but they ask that by July 15th of 2019, that you do your research and making sure that your current titles meet the updated guidelines. The updated number of characters allowed is 200 characters maximum. When they originally made this announcement, they announced that they would be 50 characters maximum. There was a lot of backlash against that because there's obvious strategies to maximize the product title and how much of an explanation you can include there. So because of that, Seller Central created an updated announcement where they mentioned that 200 characters maximum will be the updated number of characters allowed. Some product categories do allow longer titles. So we do advise that you review the criteria for your specific category. Some of those categories include shoes, handbags, and sunglasses, baby clothing, accessories, and luggage, consumer electronics, fine art, lighting, tools, and home improvement, as well as jewelry. Right. And as we're recording today, the suppression update is set to take effect in less than one month. So don't delay in updating your titles. Do an audit of all the items in your catalog, even the inactive items, probably because if you ever come back into stock with those or decide to sell those again, you don't want to second guess whether or not that title is according to Amazon's policies. For merchants that sell maybe thousands or tens of thousands of products, this is going to be a gigantic effort. So don't delay, get those titles updated and make sure that your listings aren't getting suppressed. Remember, July 15th is the deadline. Some other important aspects to note about this update certain other requirements that Amazon is asking about your titles. First of all, there's capitalization rules in terms of capitalizing the first letter in sort of a title format, restricting the use of all caps, rules around conjunctions and prepositions, how to treat numbers and symbols in your title if, if you're going to include those. And then what I think is most helpful is some of the policies and, and rules about how to make a title for child variations of your catalog and how to include things like size and color. So take a look at the link we'll include in these show notes to Amazon's article. Make sure you're reading it and understanding what it means and taking the appropriate actions and updates for your own titles in your catalog. Amazon even touches on some of what I mentioned before in terms of what the end user, what the shopper sees. Some of what they mention here is don't include price or promotional messages in your title. You can't use the word sale or free shipping in your title, right? Although it might be tempting to do so, it might be something that technically could be beneficial for your buyer to know. It's better to include that information in the product description versus your title. In another example, Amazon says, move product specific information such as quote unquote, great workout to the product description for the ASIN or include it in the keywords. Right. And, and if you're thinking this is Amazon reducing your ability to rank your products through effective SEO, do not stress it and worry about that. Several things I've seen, thought leaders I've heard speak, 
different aspects of Amazon that we've become aware of over the years. Amazon has very advanced tactics for understanding how to rank your product according to the keywords used to find and, and search for that. And they're improving that all the time. The end result is that it, it typically requires less and less words from you as the listing editor in order to rank your product accordingly. How shoppers will expect to find your product and which keywords they're going to use to do that. So great updates today, Michael, in our customer service roundup for June. July is going to be even better. We're going to likely have some news and updates around how Amazon Prime Day 2019 went. This year, it's an unprecedented 48 hours. It's the longest that it's ever been with the most deals ever. So looking forward to seeing Amazon setting some more records. Certainly, there's going to be a lot going on, a lot more activity, an extra day of Prime Day deals for your shoppers. That can have a huge impact in terms of what you see. Even if you're not running deals on Prime Day, more shoppers will be coming to Amazon.com and thus they might be coming to your listings as well. Right. And be on the lookout. Michael and I will be producing some content on Prime Day prep, how to look at your store, evaluate your listings and your policies and procedures to create the best proactive customer service experience to reduce any issues that you might have to deal with and your team has to process on your end. Uh, But then also just to prep your listing and and your product and your brand for Q4 because depending on if you have a seasonal product, a giftable product, Q4 can be like prime day every day or at least it can feel like that with the amount of volume that you can see. We'll publish that soon through the podcast and on our website at sellersmile.com. That brings us to the end of this episode. Michael, do you want to read today's customer service quote? Yes, today's quote comes from Dean Kamen. He's an American engineer, inventor, and businessman known for his invention of the Segway. Dean's quote comes at an interesting time since we're seeing all these updates with Shopify and their fulfillment network. So Dean says, every once in a while, a new technology, an old problem, and a big idea turn into an innovation. In this case, with Shopify's announcements, they seem to be announcing a little bit of all of that. Some problems they're addressing with technology, with better or bigger ideas. To find the show notes, which includes links to the articles and resources we discussed today, go to sellersmile.com forward slash 011011. If you have your own e-commerce customer service question, submit that to Keep smiling at sellersmile.com. We would love to address that question or comment on a future episode. And if you found this conversation valuable, hit subscribe. You'll get the next episode straight to your device. Thanks again and keep smiling.